Hello everybody and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's education videos. Today we're talking about film and specifically DX coding. So a DX code on a roll of film uh, like this, this is Ilford HB5 Plus and this film has a DX code. What is a DX code? Let me just tuck that film out of the way there. DX code, that right there, that black and silver part of your roll of film is a code. Not that, this right here. Um, some rolls of film do not have a DX code. This is a roll of Fomapan, right? So it's a little bit of a cheaper film, and it's made in the Czech Republic. It does not come with a DX code, and it can present a problem for some cameras. So if we kind of put these side by side here, and you'll see where that DX code should be, right? There you go. So it's kind of right around here where the where the word Fomapan is. That's about where the DX code should be on this roll of film. It's not a problem for a camera like this. If you have a camera that you can manually set your ISO uh, on a, for example, this is a, a Canon Rebel 2000 film camera, um, not a problem. If you can manually set your ISO, a non-DX coded roll of film, not a problem. You just plug in the ISO when you load your roll into the camera. The problem comes when you're using a camera like this. This is an Olympus Stylus Zoom and or something even like this, all right? So this is a Nikon N75, the, you know, you would think a robust SLR camera like this, you'd be able to manually set your ISO. You cannot set your ISO on some advanced cameras. Not a problem if you are shooting with a DX coded roll of film. This code actually the camera reads that and it will tell the camera what the ISO is and, and each ISO has a code on it. Inside of the camera, every camera for the most part that has um, where you load the film has these metal points right there. Okay, So these little metal contact points, they touch the metal here and each, there are seven, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven kind of lines, and you use those sort of in, um, the, the manufacturer will kind of set the ISO according to these lines here. This is just paint, so it's covering up the metal. The, the little metal contact points in the camera touch these points here that are bare metal, and it makes, uh, it, it, it reads that code, and then it reads the ISO, so it tells this tells the camera what the ISO of your film is. Okay, what do you do when you have film like this? Fomapan is one. Arista EDU Ultra, which is one of the rolls of film that I recommend to most of my students, it's a good, cheap film, does not have a DX code on it. So how do you resolve that if your camera does not have um, the ability to manually set the ISO? Well, here's what you do. make your own. All right. What you can do, this is a roll of foam pan. It's the same roll here. Okay. It's the same exact roll of film. And if you look here, you can see what I have done is sanded off the paint. So this is a metal canister. And you may or may not be able to see, it's a little bit hard to see, but if I kind of rotate this back and forth, you might be able to see, I just took some scotch tape and I placed it where it needs to be in order to read the ISO, which is, this is ISO 400. So I sanded the paint away, and then I cut narrow strips of tape to cover up. And so what happens when this gets loaded into the camera is it touches the metal contact points to uh, tell the camera the same as it would right here, okay, these same sort of contact points, these same metal contact points to tell the camera it's ISO 400 speed film. And so you can trick the camera, or it's not really tricking, is it? You can tell the camera what the ISO of the film is when you have these sort of, uh, the ability to just sand away some of the paint. Now, could I have just sanded away in this area and left the, the paint on there? Yes, I absolutely could have. I used a Dremel tool to do this. You can use sandpaper by hand. Um, and so it was a little easier for me to just do this very quickly with the Dremel tool and then tape with um, some, some regular scotch tape. And then I used a, uh, an X-Acto blade to sort of cut the, the right code. How do you find the right code? It's out there on the internet. Just Google DX code. Um, you can actually buy stickers. So you can actually buy stickers 
instead of manually cutting the tape like this, they're almost a dollar per sticker, right? And so the difference of cost between this roll and this roll, the Foma Pan versus the Ilford, it's about a buck. And so if I'm going to buy the stickers, I'm just going to go ahead and buy these, you know, the slightly more expensive film that has a DX code on it. If you are only, you know, doing this every once in a while with a non-DX coded film, well, okay, fine. Maybe you'll uh, get those stickers. Maybe it's easier for you. Um, in any case, this was free and took maybe five minutes to do. Once you get kind of a, a rhythm and a routine on how to do this, I bet we could do this in under two minutes. So it's a little bit of work to do, but it's not impossible. And this is a, um, one of the sort of resolutions to a problem which has come up in a couple of my classes now where students will buy non-DX coded film. They have a camera, which they thought would be fine, right? N90, uh, N75, it's a great uh, SLR camera. You can't manually set the ISO on it. What do we do? Well, there it is, okay? Sand away and uh, the, the area of um, the film that uh, where, the, where it's gonna make uh, contact in the camera. How do you know where that is? I would just look up. There's a couple of other videos out there on how to actually do this. I can show you if you're in one of my classes. I can show you. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, if you have a roll with a DX code, you can kind of go off of that and then um, use that as sort of a guide of like where to sand down and then add your tape and cut it down. So. Um, how do we know this works? Well, if we plug it into a camera like this that I can, um, it'll show me, it'll tell me what the ISO is when I load it, um, that's a good indicator, right? So this camera here will show me the ISO as it reads it off of the um, DX code, okay? And so if you do that, then you can um, uh, double check that it's working before you load it into your camera that doesn't have the manual controls. Um, it's also important to have the ability to rewind the film and leave the leader out after you load it, especially if it has a manual pickup. Getting the film rewound after you check it in your camera, that's sort of an additional complication that um, again, if you're in my class, I can show you how to do that. It's again, you could you could look it up, right? You can just look up how to rewind the film so that you have the leader out so you can load it in, you know, again, make sure to, to make sure that the that your manual DX coding works. Um, you can also just go into a dark room at night or your dark room and take the film out of the camera and then manually kind of bring it back into the cartridge with leaving the leader out. So there are some options there. But that's it. You know, this is a problem that has come up a couple times and I wanted to share my solution. Here you go. Sand it down, use some tape, make your own DX code and your film will have the correct exposure when you make your pictures, all right? Hope that helps.